A Serious Man, the Coen Brothers 2009 dark comedy, tells the story of a physics professor, Larry Gopnik, going through a series of unfortunate events leading up to his son's bar mitzvah. Larry's lists of misfortune ranges from his neighbor trying to build a shed onto his property to his wife leaving him for another man and everything else in between. A motif running through the film sees Larry uttering the phrase, That's right, I haven't done anything. A blameless decree from the man going through so much, much in the same vein as biblical character Job. Larry's plight in the film mirrors that of Job in the Old Testament, albeit from a more relevant and modern perspective. We will, we're, we're gonna get through this. In the book of Job, Job's faith and loyalty are put to the test when God and Satan strike to prove Job's faith is not just because of his good fortune. Intrigued by a wager, God instructs Satan to test Job's undying loyalty with the condition of not touching his soul. After the death of his children and afflicted with painful boils, he denounces his birth and is told by his wife to walk away from his devotion to God. He doesn't. Then three men, Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Namathite, each give their two cents as to why Job lost everything. He shrugs off these unwanted pieces of advice as nothing insightful or helpful. In the end, He's rewarded for his loyalty as God speaks to him and rewards his fear with a doubling of blessings, including more children and livestock. The opening of the film with a woman stabbing what she thinks to be a dybbuk may be an allegorical retelling of the wager between God and Satan, this time in exchange for Larry. For most of the film, Larry goes through turmoil vaguely mirroring that of Job. With each passing moment, Larry dives deeper and deeper into a state of unknowing and helplessness. He begins to unravel slowly into a state of emotional and mental paralysis. Repeating his mantra of not doing anything is his way of trying to find justification and solace, a sign of prayer falling on deaf ears. Larry responds to this to a number of people, including Dick Dutton, a Columbia House representative who calls to collect money for a subscription his son signs up for in his name. He explains his inaction should be reason enough for cancellation, to which Dutton replies, oh, Monthly main select, is that a record? I didn't ask for any records. To receive the monthly main selection, you do nothing. You That's right, I haven't done anything. Yes. Inaction will also result in consequences. Teaching his class about the scope of Schrodinger's paradox and the uncertainty principle, Larry instructs that there is always a reaction to every action you make, whether you do so knowingly or unknowingly. This is more evident in his exchange with Clive, a student who attempts to bribe him in exchange for a passing grade. With a slam to his desk, Larry lectures that there are always consequences to one's actions, a sentiment Larry fails to take on his own, despite also repeating a similar sentiment to his down-on-his-luck brother. Shem, Arthur, please. Sometime, please calm down. Sometimes you have to help yourself. Hashem hasn't given me shit. Trying to seek out the advice from those in a higher regard, Larry neglects to see that there's a level of responsibility that he fails to uphold. The Cohen brothers don't make Larry a complete copy of Job, however. While yes, Job curses the day of his birth, Larry tries to remain cool under loads of pressure. Mir, sir, my sir? Mir, so my sir, sir. As Larry is forced to move out of his home at the behest of his wife's paramour, he maintains his wife's advice that maybe what he's doing is best for his children. Even when Larry thinks his wife is withdrawing money from his bank account, he questions if opening up another in secret is honest and forthright. Oh, absolutely. That's not, um, dishonest? Oh, absolutely. A sign of his meekness, sure, but it could also be a sign of his easy manipulation. What Larry does that Job doesn't is seek out the advice from three rabbis. When meeting with Junior Rabbi Scott, Larry is told that he needs to look at his life with a new perspective. Someone with a fresh... Perspective. That's what it is, Larry. Rabbi Nochner, the second rabbi, recites a complex, long-winded tale with the message that questions too great are too frivolous to be answered. These questions that are, that are bothering you, Larry, maybe they're like a toothache. Mm -hmm. Feel them for a while, then they go. I don't want it to just go away. I want an answer. Sure. 
We all want the answer. Hashem doesn't owe us the answer, Larry. Hashem doesn't owe us anything. The obligation runs the other way. Why does he make us feel the questions if he's not going to give us any answers? <laughs> he hasn't told me. Meaning Larry's problems should be swept under the rug until they become a problem no more. The third rabbi, Rabbi Marshak, Larry tries to see refuses to talk to him, a symbolic gesture that mirrors that of prayer, asking and never getting the response you expect. The rabbi is busy. He didn't look busy. However, for Larry, the answers to his problems may be right in front of him. In a dream sequence, Larry instructs a class on the uncertainty principle, a principle that he states, It proves we can't ever really know what's going on. German physicist Werner Heisenberg concluded that the uncertainty principle states the more accurate a position of a particle, the less likely its momentum can be determined, and vice versa. This works for physics, but for Larry, this could speak about his relationship with his wife or what Reddit user Shadow Blue equated it to, the aerial Larry constantly adjusts to get television channels. The more you can try to get a hold onto life and telegraph the next move, something unexpected always rears its head into the picture. The aerial is the perfect allegorical reference to this, but look at his car crash as another example, or his phone call with his doctor at the tail end of the picture. Another lesson Larry teaches is that of Schrodinger's paradox, more commonly known as Schrodinger's cat. In layman terms, a thought experiment by Erwin Schrodinger illustrates that a cat is to be left in a box with a hammer that would crack open radiation. Until opening the box, the cat is determined to be in a paradoxical state of being both alive and dead at the same time. You never really know the consequences of one's actions without taking a peek and learning the fate of said actions, a dark cloud that looms over the head of Larry thanks to Clive. Larry's inaction throughout the film creates a paradox of him both taking the bribe and not. Larry does ultimately make a choice which may or may not be right. Oh my god, where'd you get this? It doesn't matter. It's a lot of money. Jefferson's airplane, Somebody to Love, is played throughout the film, a musical motif. After his bar mitzvah, Danny meets with Rabbi Marshak, who dispels advice to the young boy. Then the truth is found to be lies and all the hope within you dies. Denbot. Marshak describes Larry's problems with accuracy using lyrics written by Darby Slick. Marshak's advice isn't advice, it's just another unanswered question. For Danny, this means nothing more than the recital of lyrics. Before leaving, Marshak's final words are Be a good boy. Words that cut through to the audience. It comes off as rather ironic, since up to this point we've seen Danny smoke weed and steal money. But be a good boy is the only advice that is actually worth merit as it's the only set of words told by anyone that isn't investigatory or blameful. It's words to live by, albeit if it is simplistic in nature. A serious man doesn't give definitive answers about God and life. Instead, Joel and Ethan Cohen dangle a mirror in front of the audience. Is religion the right path to enlightenment? Can mathematics be used to solve all of life's unanswered questions? Or can we try to answer our own questions with our own methods? The answer is never clear. Like Larry, Job seeks answers in the form of prayers. Job gets his questions answered, but unlike Job, Larry is left wondering why his has fallen on deaf ears. One thing the Cohen brothers make aware, that the choices you make may take the form of results you can't bear. You have to take responsibility for your own actions. However, unlike Job, Larry isn't rewarded for his patience and blamelessness. He's seeking answers to a question he has yet to ask to himself. Or maybe Larry just needs to take responsibility for his actions. 
A serious man could also be the Cohen's way of expressing that life's torturous journeys are not always met with fortuitous ends. So hey everyone, that is my video on A Serious Man. I've been working on this for a while and I've actually rewritten it multiple times, even up to the point of actually filming this today. I rewrote it, uh, re-narrated uh, some parts, and even added a few parts into the video that uh, that wasn't in there uh, last week or even last month. This is a video that I've been working on for a long time and trying to conceptualize and I've been working on some other things in between that but this was the first one to come out. Now there are a lot of things that I could have talked about with a serious man including the Goy's teeth, um, even uh, Arthur, Larry's brother, and even his son Danny can be talked about even a little bit more. Um, but. Uh, it was really hard to choose which topic I wanted to talk about for A Serious Man and I decided to keep it the way it is. If you want to check out the written version of this, you can click the link below, uh, click the I in the top corner of the video or uh, just wait until the very end of the video and check out LazyDogFilms.net. So this is what I want to do in conjunction with my film reviews and talking about the Oscars coming up and things of that nature. And in order for me to do that, uh, I, I opened up a Patreon page. So if you want to become a patron of mine, uh, you can click here or you can visit the link in the description down below and become a patron of mine and help fund Lazy Dog Films to become more extravagant I mean I'm doing the editing myself and that's why it's taking so long I'm working on an old rig but I I really want to do this uh, full-time and with your help I know I can uh, this is something that I've been toying around with with um, for, for a while and now I'm able to do something about it and uh, uh, become a patron of mine if you want to check out my last video check out my video on inherent vice which you can find in the link in the description or you can click somewhere in the video i still haven't figured out where i'm gonna put the the videos anyway but uh i'm i'm just incredibly grateful i know if, and if you like the video make sure to hit the like button down below share it comment uh try to keep it civil is all i hope really all i hope for but uh, if you enjoy this type of video, let me know what movie you want me to tackle next. I have one in mind already. And uh, it's private. It's partly because I have to finish reading this. But only time will tell. So don't forget to subscribe, become a patron, and thank you.